Good uh, morning. Um, please uh, welcome our next speaker, Honza Kral, who will be talking about designing a Pythonic interface. <laughs> okay. Uh, this, is, uh, well, this presentation is about a research and development project that we are in, uh, working with uh, David, also with uh, students of uh, our laboratory and also a, a third partner, uh, Rafael Yeheskel. The agenda of this uh, presentation will be the motivation of all the idea of the uh, embedded flexible language, our objectives, the programming model of EFL, the execution model, the implementation of all this idea, how and then the focus of this lecture is how we can implement parallel design patterns in EFL, conclusions and further work. Then the motivation. You, uh, we know that we, are an, we have an heterogeneity, a, a huge heterogeneity of incompatibility of programming, uh, parallel programming platforms today, MPI, OpenMP, Python threads, Python uh, multiprocessing, etc. There is a need to make easier to program parallel systems for a common approach, which will free programmers for platforms, uh, technical intricacies. Our objectives were and continue to be a major objective has been to develop a straightforward language which implements that common approach and allows implicit instead of explicit parallel programming, making easier to the programmer to program uh, parallel systems. This should allow flexible computation that further we will talk about it, in which sequential and parallel executions produce identical deterministic results. It doesn't matter if we run the same program sequentially or in parallel, we ensure that the values, the result values will be the same. The, the run, the execution is completely deterministic. To facilitate this, a deterministic parallel programming tool has been developed and its name is Embedded Flexible Language, EFL. The programming model of EFL. Suppose we have a, a, a program, a sequential program, and we decide that to, to have a better uh, performance, we, we want to parallelize part of the code. Then in those parts that the programmer wants to uh, parallelize uh, that, uh, that parts of the code, we, uh, uh, we embed blocks of EFL that you see here in the, uh, uh, in the slide. And the sequential parts of the program are written in the host language, maybe Python, maybe C, maybe any uh, uh, programming language. The parts of the program which are to be executed in parallel are written as EFL embedded, uh, embedded code. The EFL syntax is C style. Why? Because we wanted something universal, that the same embedded language could be used for any language. And the most wisely uh, used syntax in programming is the C style. Then because of that, we decided that the EFL syntax will be C style. And host language independent to be universal. The semantics of EFL is deterministic like in functional programming. The memory management we keep to the, to the host language, implemented by translating embedded EFL blocks. The semantics is implemented, but by translating EF, embedded EFL blocks of code into the parallel code of the host language. Then what is the uh, principles of the programming model of EFL to ensure deterministic parallelization. First, the programmer should call pure functions, functions that don't, don't have side effects, ensuring the functional programming concept of referential transparency. Variables used inside EFL blocks may be of two, 
two kinds only, in or out, but not in out, variables that we can read only from them or write only for them, to them, but not both, and the, the important concept of once only assignment that is connected to the principle that variables may be only in or out. Then the execution model of EFL, the key aspect of the EFL execution model is that parallel and or sequential execution orders of the program execution is that uh, a program that is uh, written according to the EFL programming model will yield deterministic identical values. And because of that, the flexibility of, of execution orders, we call our execution model flexible computation. Then we will now uh, try to, to understand why uh, we need once only assignment. If you see here in this code example uh, that we initialize X and Y with one and three, and here, the block of EFL that we have three lines here, X, X receives the value of F of A, Y the value of F of B, and X equals X plus F of C. If we execute this code sequentially, the line one after line two after line, line three, the, the the final uh, uh, values of x and y are x is fa plus fc and y is fb. But in a parallel execution that every line can be, can be executed in any order, we, and in the, or, in the order is 3, 2, 1, we have a completely different uh, value than in the sequential execution. Then allowing X to be in and also out leads to undeterministic results. Uh, if we, uh, uh, if we uh, don't allow uh, in, out, or, and only in or out, the same code will be written this way, that X is only an out uh, a variable, also Y is an out variable, and then the sequential execution, also the parallel execution, any parallel execution will give exactly the same values. It's a once only assignment prevents the undeterministic results that we had uh, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, non, uh, non EFL uh, uh, code. Then how we implement our idea of the, of the EFL, the precompiler of EFL. Would, uh, uh, let's, let's see here two views. The view of the implementer, that he writes the syntax and semantics of EFL. We used a, 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 a tool that is called the Java CC, Java Compiler Compiler. The Java Compiler Compiler according to the syntax semantics will, uh, will uh, generate or create a platform specific EFL precompiler. Until now, we have two precompilers, and we will talk about them uh, in, in further in, in the later, later, uh, later uh, slides. And the programmer's view, he writes an EFL based host language search code. That uh, code is translated by the precompiler to a parallelized host language code, and then the host language runtime platform ru uh, runs that parallelized uh, code. Uh, and you see the, the, our approach is that if we have uh, a specific uh, precompiler of EFL, we can write with EFL in any language but our implementations until now are for Python. Then we implemented uh, the, the, the precompiler for the multiprocessing pools 
module of Python. Uh, what are the characteristics here? That the pool, a pool's object is a collection of fixed number of child processes, that the number of child processes defaults to the number of cores in the computer. The pool object mechanism serves as the scheduler of that uh, uh, parallel execution. And inside the, the, this uh, Python module, we have uh, built in the map fun functionality that we will see uh, later, the importance of that functionality. The pools module was modified by us, allowing unlimited hierarchy of non-diamonic processes because the original Python pool generates only diamonic processes, and that constrains the hierarchy or the nesting of parallelism. And the pool-based scheduling management is the element that allows us to and manage all the, the, the scheduling of the parallel execution. The other implementation, the second implementation, is an MPI ver version that is based in a module that was developed at the University of Montreal that is called DTM, that is a, an element inside a, a package of evolutionary algorithms that they developed that is called DEAP. DTM is a Python module written using the MPI for Pi module. It's a layer on over the MPI for Pi. DTM allows e EFL implicit parallel programming in a similar level of abstraction as that that we are, that we get uh, got by the multiprocessing uh, Python module. Even the, the syntax in DTM is very similar to the syntax in the multiprocessing module. Also, in DTM, we have a map functionality. And the number of child processes defaults here to the number of cores in the computer cluster that we run the MPI. A scheduling mechanism also is built in in the DTM. Now we will focus on how we implement the parallel design patterns in EFL. And we will talk about the implementation of the fork joint para uh, pattern. And those are the constructs in EFL that allow the implementation of this pattern. Master worker pattern with the four block, map pattern with all uh, we have here three alternatives, map loop, map loop, loop, and four, the reduce pattern and the filter pattern. And we will see also a construct that may be very useful, but it's not connected to any uh, specific pattern, the if block. Then the, the fork, fork join uh, pattern. Um, maybe that part of you know what is the, the idea of the fork join. We have here a, a program. Until now, it's a sequential control flow. Here there is a fork that generates n child tasks. Until all the tasks are not finished, the, the program waits. The, the parent task, task waits until all are finished, and then it joins all the results, partial results of the computation of all the child tasks, and then it continues its uh, sequential uh, control flow. Then uh, the first uh, uh, EFL construct that allow us very easily to, to, to implement the idea of the fork join uh, pattern is the assignment block. In the assignment block, we have n assignments that all the right-hand side of the assignments are uh, executed in parallel. When all the, the, the child tasks finish their job, then uh, all, the, the value, all the variables receive the, their, their value, and then the program continues after the end of the block of EFL. Can we have 
two uh, examples. The first example, we have my value 1 equals 5, my value 2 equals f of 5. Uh, we decided that if the, in an assignment block we have this kind of assignment of simply a value, this assignment will not generate a child task. It's a waste of time. That this kind of assignment will be, will be uh, executed sequentially, like in any other, uh, in a sequential uh, program. Um, and, and here, because we have a call to a function, yes, this, this call is executed in parallel. Here we have another example of calling two computing intensive functions. In this case, both are run in parallel, both generate a child task, and when both uh, uh, return, my value uh, one and my, my value two receive their values, and then the program continues. Another uh, uh, option to, to uh, the, the fork join is that if we, if we have here, a, 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 like in CIA or in, a, like in, a, in, in Python, if, else, if, etc., all the Boolean expressions are executed in parallel, and the first one, sequentially, that is true, uh, uh, um, launches the, the, the body of the, of the option. But there may be a problem with the PIF. If uh, we have a case like this, and A is zero, uh, this may, may provoke uh, a divide by zero exception. The, the, the problem of the, or the danger of the PIF is that if the programmer is not uh, aware of that, one of the options here that all are, are uh, executed in parallel may, may provoke an exception. Master worker pattern. We implement the master worker pattern with the for construct. And the for construct looks like a regular for in C, right? But every instance of the, uh, of the body of the for is uh, executed in parallel. Suppose we have M processors or, a, or R co uh, M cores in the system. When N greater than M, the scheduling uh, built into the pool modules, uh, N is the number of, of tasks that are generated. And in the pools modules of, module of multiprocessing and in the task manager of DTM, uh, they allow implicitly the implementation of the master worker pattern. Then e in every moment we will have M processes running, and all the others are waiting to be executed. If N equals M, the, 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 the pattern is actually a for, fork join pattern that is implemented also by the for construct. Map pattern. Do you know map? The idea of the map is that we have an input sequence, maybe a list, maybe a tuple, uh, maybe an array in other languages of, in, of length n, we, ha we have a function that is applied over all the n uh, elements of the uh, input sequence, and then the, the map generates an output sequence exactly of the same length, but there, uh, its elements are the result of applying the function on the corresponding element of the uh, input uh, sequence. And that, here we have the, the syntax of the map loop. Map loop receives a function and the uh, input sequence. Uh, another uh, construct with a completely different uh, kind of execution is that implements also the map pattern is the loop block. In the loop block, we have here a label that is like a, the name of a function, and here there is a 
a recursive a call to the label, and then recursively the loop block generates n instances of calling the CPU intensive function uh, according to the, to the value of i. Then also here we will have n processes, n tasks that are uh, uh, run in, in parallel, but their, their launching is like a um, recursive call. Now we, we will see here how actually the, the EFL precompiler works. If we have, say, the, here uh, a, a program that receives a list of numbers and will return the square root of every one of those numbers, then the parmap function that receives the input sequence will generate uh, an output sequence that is uh, the, the, um, uh, the result of the map loop on sec in. Ah, it, it should be sec, not sec in here. Uh, uh, sec and the uh, map, map func. And then uh, the result is printed and the, the, the program ends. Implicitly, you know, you see, uh, here we have parallelized the, the uh, calling of the end callings of the map, map func, as how it, it looks after the translation with the precompiler. This, this example is with the multiprocessing uh, uh, precompiler. You see here we have the par map. Here the original EFL block starts then uh, an object of a, of a pool, of our pool non-daemon uh, module is, is created, a manager of multiprocessing is created, a queue of manager is created, and then here uh, uh, from the pool, the map asynchronous method is called with the map func and the uh, input uh, input sequence, okay? And here map out will, after all the um, um, after all the the subtask were launched, then with a, with the get uh, the 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 get method that waits until all the subtasks are uh, are ended. Map out receives. Uh, the, the out sequence. And then here we close the pool and we, we uh, uh, join all the, the subtasks that, uh, that were created and return map out. You see the programmer doesn't have to deal with all this complex uh, code of multiprocessing. He wrote very simply like in a sequential programming uh, uh, program, right? Uh, okay. Reduce pattern. A re for reduce pattern, that it uh, works like you see here in the, in, in the slide. We have an, an input sequence, and those fun that function should be a, a, an associative function that, like plus or multiply, and then every two elements are, uh, um, are uh, um, passed to uh, the function here and here, and then the, the results, we have a, a, a temporary uh, uh, sequence of the results of the first level, and then every one of, every, every couple is, is uh, is passed to the function again until we receive the reduced value, the, the, the result of all the reduce. And for that, we have a construct that is called log, log loop. It receives 
the input sequence and it receives that associative function that must be, needs to receive two parameters to be able to do what you, you see here in this, in this uh, uh, picture. Then here uh, we have the, the algorithm of the log loop that in the questions, if you will like, we can, we can uh, uh, analyze the, the algorithm. Now here you have uh, uh, an example. We have a, a list of eight numbers and with the add, uh, add method of the int class, of the integers of Python, we call to log loop with L and the, the add of integers. And what happens in the running? One and two plus, plus one and two is three, three plus four is seven, etc. And then in the other round, three and seven is 10, 11 and 15 is 26, and then we have the result. That way, the log loop works. But we can uh, use the, the add of the list uh, uh, class or the add of the string class, and then uh, we, we can uh, uh, do reduce uh, with uh, every, every kind of values. The filter pattern. The filter pattern uh, is implemented using map. The map uh, um, uh, uses the map function that is uh, uh, essentially is a, uses a Boolean function that uh, every element that uh, uh, the Boolean function is true remains the same element. All others that the, fun the Boolean function is not true, the, the map function will return none, and then the result of in, in map out will be in all the places in the sequence where the Boolean function was true is, is uh, passed to the output, and all the others are none. And then you see after the the EFL block, we have a list comprehension that get rid of all the, the elements in a map out that are none. And then in sec out, we have only those that are true for the Boolean, the Boolean function. In that way, we, we may implement the uh, filter pattern using using uh, EFL. And the if block is like a sequential, uh, a sequential uh, uh, if that every, in this case, instead of PIF, in this case, every Boolean expression is evaluated sequentially. And the first one that is true, the body is executed. But all the EFL block is executed uh, in parallel with all the, the, um, the, the program. Then now we will see uh, two EFL programming examples. The first, using assignment block and if block. And you see here that in the first block, we have A and B that are for that block are out variables that will have the, the result of F on X and the, the result of B, of G on X. Then we go out from that block, and then we, in the next block, we can use it, A and B as invariables. And then uh, in, the, in, the, in the second block, we, uh, we can read from A and from B, because in the second block, A and B are invariables and not out variables. Second example that also uh, uh, shows how we can very easily uh, implement the nesting pattern. In nesting is that we, we have a, a oh, I'm sorry. We, we have a, a n a child task, and in every child, every child task also 
we launch parallel tasks. We have here a matrix, a 2D matrix with a vector. In, in the main function, we scan with the four inside the EFL block by, uh, uh, by uh, rows, and every row is, is passed to mult to uh, uh, make also in parallel the product between every, every element of the row with the, uh, with the element, the, uh, the according element in the vector. And then you, we see that, oh, uh, we see that we have a nesting of instances of the master uh, worker pattern when in, in main the for loop iterates upon the rows of the matrix and in the second, in the nested one, uh, it uh, in the, upon the items of the, of the row. Conclusions. Two EFL precompilers were implemented. Safe and efficient parallelism has been made possible by the EFL framework, and parallel design patterns have been shown to be implementable using EFL. We, uh, in the electronics department of our college, two students build this cluster of 64 Raspberry Pi processors, and we, after uh, we go back home, we will try to uh, test EFL scalability with that 64 uh, uh, Raspberry Pi cluster that in every one of them run the MPI version of, of EFL. Further work, we are developing an EFL curriculum to teach how to implement serial and parallel algorithms, flexible algorithms with EFL. Also, we will, uh, we will want to implement concurrent data structures using EFL. Also, we want to answer the question, are purely functional, functional data structures EFL compatible? And also, with a, in a joint pro, a project with Professor Miroslav Popovic from Serbia, we are rewriting an algorithm for a predicting structure of proteins that is called DIPSAM using EFL and using software transactional memory. And then the invitation, like in the lightning talks here, we invite you to join us, to collaborate with us, to redesign EFL with Python-like syntax, and then uh, make happy all the crowd here in the, in the Python conference that we have uh, uh, an EFL version that is completely, purely Python. Implement, also we have, you, we want to implement new versions of the EFL precompilers for other parallel programming platforms and other host programming languages. And also implement all the, the, the basic uh, uh, kernel of uh, parallel design patterns using EFL and uh, I, uh, we, we also have to, to answer the question, are there part, patterns that cannot be implemented within the EFL framework? Maybe we have to research that. Then, uh, to the end, uh, our uh, laboratory is the FlexComp Lab. Here you have the website. You are invited to enter the website and download the, the installation kit of EFL. All the faculty in the laboratory is me, David Dayan, that is here in the audience, uh, Dr. Rafael Yeheskel, and Dr. Shimon Mizrahi from the electronics department, that his students build that cluster of Raspberry Pi. And those are our students, part of them already graduated, and uh, 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 Elad and Moshe, uh, Bosni, Levi, and Naaman, they are developing the MPI version, they are finishing the development of the MPI version of, of the precompiler. And Miroslav Popovic from the Novi Sad University is our research, European research partner. And here you have the, 
picture of our campus, the Lev Academic Center, uh, that is also called Jerusalem College of Technology. Thank you very much. So, questions? Thank you, yes, we have time for a few questions. No questions? Nobody wants to collaborate with us in our project? So it's okay? Yes? So I was wondering, um, I know you use C, but it seems like a hardware description language might be a better syntax for the if EFL parts. Um, do you know of any use of like more hardware description language, or did you just use C because that's more familiar to computer programmers? Uh, we we developed uh, uh, EFL especially because ourselves. Uh, felt that was was very was not easy to 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 program uh, directly explicitly the uh, with the parallel uh, uh, tools that are in python or in other languages then if we if we design a layer uh, over the 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 the, the parallel tool of the specific language will will uh, will uh, make easier for the programmer to program, and uh, uh, we can uh, ask if uh, the the code generated by the precompiler will be as uh, uh, efficient uh, than the than if we could write it. Uh, by hand, that is the same question that in uh, in the um, end of the 1960s, when people wrote uh, uh, operating systems in in assembly, and uh, Ritchie and Kerning and in, uh, in Bell Laboratories, they de developed the C language, and they argued that we can implement an operating system in a high-level language, and and uh, is what we have uh, today. Today, nobody writes an operating system in assembly. And also here, we, we, we would like to, to, to uh, uh, allow everybody to write parallel code in very easily and, and then uh, utilize all the computing power that we, we have now in the multi-core and clusters of, uh, of uh, computers. I, I, ask, I answered your question? Okay. So any other question? Yes. Uh, I didn't quite understood whether there is already some sort of uh, Python uh, module in some in some beta version, or are you going to start from scratch implementing it, or what's the current state? We we will not we we can consider that idea, but our idea is in uh, at least uh, now. To, to have a, a language that is embedded in a host language. And it uses all the, the platform uh, uh, possibilities, okay? Uh, maybe that in the future we will think about uh, um, um, transforming uh, EFL in a Python module. That is what you are asking, right? In EFL will be a, a module in Python. I, I, we may we may think about that, but because what what I said in the beginning, uh, our idea is to have a universal solution for uh, parallel programming anywhere, 
in any language. But we can uh, think about that possibility that uh, uh, EFL will be a, a module uh, for Python. So we have time for one more question. If there are no, no more questions, so please uh, thank again our speaker. If you want after the lecture to talk with me, please, I am here.